it's always curious, it's always fresh, it's always innocent, it's always playful, it's always there. I'm chasing presence all the time. I'm chasing enlightenment, I'm chasing the end of seeking. <laughs> I'm seeking the end of seeking. We have attachments that pull us, go over here, do this. You need this to be happy again, to be fulfilled. And these attachments are so deeply ingrained in us that we tend to give in to them. We think that we think that we need them. My opinions are more true than others. My suffering is a little bit worse. My own definition of my true nature and what that actually is and what is keeping us away from always being with that is what I'm going to share in this video. But I'm going to start with my true nature and how I experience that and what that is and I think that if you follow me, you sort of like have probably glimpsed that yourself. We hear these terms of enlightenment or liberation and, you know, we listen to all these stories about people being enlightened and all that sort of stuff. And I think that for me, how I see enlightenment is just never losing touch with our true nature. Always being that which always is on the inside. Never getting caught up in the, in the story of the character Never getting caught up in being triggered, never getting caught up in future scenarios and expectations and thinking about the future and things that we think that we need to survive or to be happy. We're never chasing. It's the end of seeking. And to never lose ourselves in that ever again. To never lose ourselves in the seeking. And so what arises there for me when I allow the seeking to subside or to fade, to go away, to dissipate, to stop, I recognize that my thoughts are being almost drawn back into its root, let's say. And when that happens for me, I see magic everywhere. And it's not like I'm seeking for magic, because I realize that I can't find magic in the world if I, if I look for it, if, I, if I'm seeking it, I will never be able to find magic in the world. But if I allow myself to stop seeking it, if I say to myself that, what am I looking for? Why, why am I trying to find something? What am I seeking? Like if I, if I allow the seeking to stop, what arises there naturally inside is magic, wonder, awe for the ordinary. And so with that, I can look, I can go into that and look at the world with that magic. And that's where I will start finding it in the world. That which is free from the analyzing aspect of our mind all the time, the activity that wants to get something or wants to understand something or wants to understand it so that it can help people realize it too. Feeling guilty of that one that wants to figure it out all the time, that wants the outcome to happen. And so when I get rid of the, all of those things, that activity that is constantly wanting something, an outcome, complete stillness arises. And I can rest in that always and it never grows old. It's always curious, it's always fresh, it's always innocent, it's always playful, it's always there. But we won't find it if we're looking for it because it's the seeking that keeps us away from the finding. And it's the seeking that keeps us stuck in this narrative that I've lost something, I need to get it back. I've... Maybe if I look over here, if I go over there, then I'll be fulfilled again, then I will find this thing. But it's that thought that is keeping us away from our true nature. And I'm not saying that I'm enlightened. I'm not saying that, I think that the people that's that are actually enlightened on the planet right now are very few. I think being perfect, it's just another concept that the ego is chasing. I'm chasing presence all the time. I'm chasing enlightenment. I'm chasing the end of seeking. I'm seeking the end of seeking. 
it just becomes another egoic thing that we're chasing. And in that we're like back in ego, we're back in the separate self, we're back in the story of the character where we suffer all the time. And so by just allowing everything to be exactly as it is, by allowing pain to be exactly as it is, to learn to not resist pain, this is an interesting one, is actually the thing that I found the most pleasurable ever in my life. If I don't, if I don't resist pain, that is the most pleasurable thing I've ever discovered. It will be pure pain, but it will be... <sighs> it will be the, a relief like nothing else by allowing ourselves to feel it. Because it's actually the resistance towards it that keeps us away from... That, that makes us suffer. And you can think about this yourself. Seeking something or wanting something and resistance is the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. We're telling ourselves that what I have in the present moment is not enough or it's not okay and I need something to happen, I need something to change, I need to add something or take away something for me to be okay. And when, when I live like that, I am in a rush all the time to get somewhere else in here. I'm never present and I will not be able to see the magic in the world. I will not be able to be present. I will not be able to have a quiet mind. Because I will be caught up in the belief that I need something. So it's actually the belief that I need something that keeps me away from my true nature. And the interesting thing is that it's so easy to get drawn into the character again. It's so easy. Because we, we have attachments that pull us. Go over here. Do this. You need this to be happy again. To be fulfilled. And these attachments are so deeply ingrained in us that we tend to give in to them. We think that we, think that we need them. But they are actually the ones causing us pain. And we're relying on them for comfort. But it's a comfort that is causing us pain. And, so we, and, and then we resist that pain. Causing us even more pain. And then we resist that pain. And then we're just identified with the character all the time and all of us walk around and live like this all the time we think that we need something to happen which is causing all the problems we see in the world today it's reflecting itself out in the world something is not okay here on the inside i feel like i'm missing something when i'm identified with the story of the character all the time and so this is being reflected and projected out into the world something is missing in the world we feel like even the media is telling us that we are flawed in one way or another. We need more technology or we need this thing or we need whatever to be whole again. It's like you need this pill or you need this thing or you need this whatever to be perfect. But it's like we already are perfect. It's just this mechanism in the mind telling us that we are not. And when we get rid of the seeking, we, we will find that perfection. And we will find that perfection in, perfection in the world. And we will see that and we will become all of it, there will be so much space arising there. And we're not turning for the mind, turning towards the mind to look for an answer all the time, to need an answer, to seek an answer. It's all about the seeking, which creates resistance. Seeking something or seeking a way out. And when I rest as my true nature, it's like resting as that, just resting as pure presence. There's not even a person. It's like, what's a person anyway? It's just a thought. I am this person. I need these things. I need, I need to be seen this way. I need this amount of money. I need this amount of status to be happy, to be fulfilled. It's like, get rid of all of that. I don't have the energy to walk around and hold that inside anymore. And the, the world needs to be like this for me to be happy. People need to behave like this for me to be happy. It's like, <sighs> exhausting, always chasing. And so recognizing our true nature is simply, it's simply a coming back. It's a surrendering the beliefs of what the character tells us that we need to be happy. Giving that up. It's scary, it's gonna feel like dying, but it's, it's, what has made everything make the most sense ever in my life. 
And it doesn't make logical sense, but it makes intuitive sense. It's like if we want to find peace, which we're all striving for, if we want to find that, we want to give everything up that we thought that we wanted or needed. And that can be scary. We will have to face a lot of emotions probably, most likely. And there will be a lot of fear. Fear of dying, fear of going insane, fear of whatever. But that which is aware, that which is aware which we cannot put into words, that unknown presence, That's all we need to do, to just be as that, be resting as that. And everything will solve itself. Everything will be okay there. And the interesting thing is that when we learn to give up resistance and when we learn to see all of these things that we walk around and carry so much in our nervous system all the time, we will be so much more efficient at picking this out. We will see people trying to hold it together all the time. We'll see people putting on a mask. We'll see people suffering. We'll see people, people being imprisoned within their own convictions about how the world is supposed to be. And I'm this person and I'm, 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 I know what's happening. <laughs> I know what's going on here. I, I know what, how the universe is operating. I know me, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know all of these things. My opinions are more true than others. My suffering is a little bit worse. If you take away everything that you think that you need, if you remove all of that, remove all your desires, remove all your thoughts, remove all your emotions. What is it that you cannot remove that is always here? That has always been here. That will be here when I die. That was here before I took birth. That is the only thing that is worthy of the words I, of the word I. Not I am this character, I am this, I need this, I want this, this is wrong and that is right and not that, but just that underlying presence that is always present in everything. That is how I would define my true nature and resting is that. And what I would define as enlightenment would be to never lose touch with that, ever. To live with an open heart all the time. To dedicate one's life to purifying the body, to purifying the mind, so that we never lose touch with that, ever. And for that to happen, we need to get rid of our attachments, the beliefs that we need these things to be fulfilled. And to be able to get rid of our attachments, we want to let go of resistance towards them. We want to start accepting them and look at them and accept the pain that they are causing us. To lean into that pain, to allow ourselves to feel that pain, because we will find pleasure in that pain. It will be the most rewarding thing we have ever done. And we'll find deeper silence in all that. Deeper silence, deeper presence, deeper appreciation for life, fulfillment. Regardless of what happens in the external world. Next time you watch a video of mine, I will be in Spain, in Mallorca. And I am very much looking forward to that. I have found home within myself here in Sweden. I realize that I've been running from a lot of stuff, but I found home. And I have learned that it's the seeking that keeps me away from finding deeper harmony within. And it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm always here and I'm always exactly where I'm supposed to be. But it's going to be good to go to Spain and experience some good weather again and some sunshine and, and spend some time with my younger brother and have a good time. And I'm very happy that you want to tag along on the journey. 
So don't forget to subscribe if you want to, like and comment as well, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.